I'm Christine Yorath and I'm a property consultant and interior designer. And we're here in your home in Leeds. Can you tell me about when you first started your business? Well, my property business started in 1989 and I bought the first house that I owned other than one that we lived in and refurbished it. It was in Oakwood in Leeds and it took me about a year to do the work, which I didn't realise I could have a bit more influence with the builders to work more quickly um, but when I'd finished it I was going to rent it out and the, but I decided to sell it and as it made a decent profit I quite liked doing that I thought I'd do that again and it got to the point where I was mostly doing about three at a time and for quite a few years that was what I did and then I started to keep some of them for rental and built up a rental and management company where we were managing for other people um, so I built up flats in Leeds which we then sold I had it until 2013 and sold it then. And what, what's your kind of day-to-day -day like? Hectic. I don't have um, a day off. I work at weekends. I mean, I do have some plenty of leisure time in, in between, but I don't think of Saturdays and Sundays as not being working days either. Um, and my office is built onto my home, so the people who help me come in here to work. Um, sometimes I'm in the office the whole day and it's emails and phone calls. Other times my feet don't touch the ground and I'll be on site or... I might be in a hard hat and a yellow coat or you know, I might be walking around barefoot in a house that's just newly carpeted and ready to go. And can you take me through um, how you deal with clients, so say if they've just bought or purchased a house? Um, yeah, I mean, it, you know, I think a lot of people are afraid of using an interior designer and they've got the idea that it's going to be very expensive and they don't realise it can be fantastic value and very cost effective. So initially I'll have a consultation with them, meet them at the property if it's already theirs and it might be their existing home or it might be a new house they're buying or it might be that it's just at the stage where it's drawings on paper which is perfect because then I've got a chance to influence things if they need changing. Um, we'll have a consultation, see that you know we gel and that our personalities are comfortable. What I'm really keen to do is get to know how my clients like to live. So if they have a second home or you know, if they've got a family or if they often have people to stay, you know, and, and really what their lifestyle is, if they entertain a lot, you know, do they need guest bedrooms? Do they like to eat in the kitchen? Do they eat formally? So it's really important to me that I get to understand my clients, get to know them and get to like them. Um, you know, there's only really been one example I can think of where I didn't want to do the job. Um, but mostly I've had fantastic clients, great relationships with them, just build up more and more friendships, you know, and, and love going to work. It's great when you wake up on the morning and you think, oh good, that's what I'm doing today. So that's, um, you know, the first part of it. And then I will set out by email for them a scope of work, what I intend to do, how the costings will work, timescales, um, that sort of thing. And, you know, then we, it might be a case of I'm working in a home where they're living or if it's one that we're waiting to get access to or if it's going to be built. And if it's a house that's going to be built, either as part of a development or individual, I like to be involved at the stage where I'm attending all the site meetings with the construction team so that I'm vol involved with the heating engineer, sound guys, everything, you know, to do with the building because then I can influence the decisions on all the touchy-feely bits, you know, the skirting boards, the doors, the kitchens, the bathrooms, not only the style and the taste of it, but where things go and how they function. Because it's really important to me that things perform properly and that, um, you know, I'm, my two big things, I suppose, are comfort and function. Um, you know, I think there's far too many interiors that I consider are photogenic, but really uncomfortable. You know, so you look at a photograph and you think, Oh, that looks really nice and then you think, but where would I sit and if I were, wanted to really relax could I just crash out on that sofa no because it looks like a park bench yeah. um, you know and it's just not comfortable sometimes like they're so low in the back here so there's no support the seats are not deep enough you know I always have my seats 44 inches back to front because I like to be supported at the back of my knees I don't want to sit on a seat where that's as far as the sofa will go so I've got to have them deep and I you know encourage my clients to understand why the, the shape the sofa for instance is so important not before we even choose the color and the fabric and the size of it it's getting the filling right getting the shape of it right that it does achieve what they want so they won't be disappointed um, and we're, we're in your lovely home now can you tell me a bit about how you put this together how did you go about designing your own home because it is really beautiful 
Um, well, to be honest, I mean, I've lived here a long time and, you know, it is kind of the story of my life, I suppose, in that I'm quite eclectic. So, I, you know, I will bring people into my home to show them how certain things can look. But I always say, don't think this is the only style I can do or that you will have, because this could be completely opposite to what somebody wants. And it would only be to show them or to explain to them might be something simple like how curtains are interlined or how you know I've got some rooms with padded walls how wall panelling can look nice with the padded walls that sort of thing but you know I can do any style that suits somebody and in my own home it's evolved from this room's been done um, 14 years and the only thing I've changed in here is the carpet so I like interiors that I feel will last a long time I don't like things that are so much of the moment that in six months time it looks dated and this room is a family type living room, so hence there's loads of books, loads of photographs. You know, and that's not the same in every room. I don't want every room to have loads of books and photographs, but it is pretty much the story of, you know, like my children's football trophies and that sort of thing. Um, so, you know, they're things that have happened over the years. And if you're newly married, you won't have all this stuff because it's the kind of thing that you pick up on your travels or... And it's really just evolved from, from that. And can you tell me a bit more about your background in football? Um, my husband played for Leeds United and he played for Coventry, he played for Spurs, played for Vancouver Whitecaps and he was a coach and manager of two countries. So he was manager of Wales and manager of Lebanon and he's been coached at Huddersfield and Bradford so quite a lot of northern clubs even though he's Welsh. He was a Welsh international himself and we met uh, when I was 15, engaged at 17, married at 20 and then I had three children in the first three in three years, um, two in the first year and my girls are less than a year apart and then after about a 10 year gap I had Jordan, my youngest son, so I had two girls and two boys and sadly my oldest boy died when he was 15 and my girls now, have, they've all got children. How do your family fit into your business and life? Um, Gabby, my oldest daughter, lives in London with her husband and twins. Um, my other daughter, Lulu, lives in Las Vegas. She was a Cirque du Soleil performer for a long time, for 20 years. So she's got a lovely partner called Elvis and a little girl called Mila. And then Jordan, my other son, lives in Harrogate uh, with his wife and two children. So I'm um, mum and nana. <laughs> and and so is the... Do people come back here as... Yes, is, yeah, is Gabby was here yesterday home. and the day before. Um, you know, and it's an easy house to, to... I've always got people here. Loads of my friends stay here, you know, we'll have a night out and they stay. Or, you know, they come for tea and they're still here at two in the morning. And uh, it is an entertaining house. It's good for entertaining. It kind of flows quite well. And particularly in the summer, because all the doors at the back open out onto the terrace, um, it's, you know, it, it lends itself... Yeah. And I work from here, I've got a big office built on here, so, um, you know, which has its advantages and disadvantages. You can go out for a night out, come in at midnight and think, I'll just go check a few emails and, yeah. you know, two hours later still there doing it. Um, but, yeah, I love living here, you know, and it's such an easy place to be. It's, it, it just is, and it's easy to get around, you know, I was in South Leeds this morning, um, an appointment in 15 minutes, you know, and I can go into the centre of Leeds within like three times in a day if I need to do and it's not a big deal and yet I'm surrounded with greenery and lovely views so I was thinking you know where would I get that you know where I can have that rural feel and yet be so easy into the city. Yeah. And have you always wanted to stay in Leeds? Um, well I have lived other places actually with, through football we moved to Coventry and London and Vancouver um, I didn't move to the Lebanon but um, I went several times with my youngest son while my husband was working there, so we'd home in Beirut. Um, so I have moved around. I loved living in Vancouver. My life there was wonderful. And I, I was reluctant to go as well at the time. I kind of kept delaying it and saying, oh, well, you know, let the children finish school and let them finish this term. And they were that young, it didn't really matter. And then when I got there, I couldn't believe that I could have been there three or four months earlier if I'd have known how great it was. Um, so I've moved around a lot and you know, I've had a home in Spain, so I've, you know, I used to go a lot to Spain, so I'm, but I love this house, I love living here. <laughs> and your daughter is, well, as well as being TV presenter, Gabby is also a Chancellor at Leeds University. She's a Chancellor at Leeds University, she was up yesterday for their 25 year anniversary to do a, a reading at a church service and then something at the Civic Hall afterwards. Um, and yeah, she's really busy with family work, charity work, she's 
yeah, it's 100 miles an hour with, when you live with Gabby, yeah. <laughs> and both of you, you run the skincare business We've together got a as skin, well. well we, Gabby's not really involved in running it, but before she had the twins, um, we were doing some marketing and I thought, you know, we've got our own kind of celebrity endorsement. Gabby's used it since she was 13. I mean, she's just, she's as addicted as I am to it, you know, where she'll sort of, oh, mum, I can't believe I'm running out of number two. And I'm like, why didn't you tell me when you were here two days ago? You know, and run to the post, get her order in. Um, so really what happened was about 12, 13 years ago, we decided we'd do a new website. She did the demonstrations and do some talking on it. Then she had the twins and life just got even more hectic. Um, so she's certainly is our you know, great endorsement for us, but because uh, we're both a bit kind of anti-Botox, anti-fillers, anti-everything else other than just natural skincare. So it suits us both to use it. And it was in beauty where you actually first started? Yeah, I, I did my A-levels in Leeds and then I went to Manchester for two years and qualified as a beauty therapist and I had a salon in Weatherby when I came back, when I got married, um, and I was a lecturer and an examiner when I lived in the Midlands, because I sold the salon in Weatherby to move to Coventry with my husband's football job. And didn't open a new salon, but I became a lecturer and started to teach it, and then I was asked to be an examiner. So for quite a few years I worked in that industry. Yeah. And do you still kind of keep involved with the beauty industry as well as the Not really, skincare? other than the skincare. Um, no, I'm, I'm not a very good client either because I find that, you know, I've gone sometimes for massage and I find I'm sort of lying there marking it, you know, and, or, you know, like this room's not dark enough or the towels aren't warm enough or the pressure's not deep enough. <laughs> so I'm not even a really good client now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. And in terms of interior design, have you done it for your family as well? Or? Yeah, Gabby and I do a lot together. She's had some fabulous homes. She's got a really good eye. I mean, we did spend quite some time yesterday going through samples because she's redoing her daughter's bedroom. Um, so a lot of her home things have been made bespoke in Yorkshire and taken down because I've got the contacts and the craftsmen. Um, so, but she's, I think because she travels so much internationally, you do get, you know, a good feel for styles and different ideas. And I think that's really what gives her that edge probably that she wouldn't have. So she's got quite clear ideas about what she wants. Her look's a bit different to mine. And her home's beautiful and, you know, she really enjoys doing it. Whereas my other daughter, Lulu, her home is a mid-century, which is quite a popular style in America. So it's like 1960s furniture, basically. Her home is as well. Um, and they did a massive renovation, but kept it quite true to its 1960s origins. Um, it used to be Johnny Carson's house where Lulu lives. And she likes 1960s furniture, the sort of stuff that, you know, I got married in the 70s. It was that sort of yeah. style of furniture, so I, it wouldn't be my taste. Um, but it suits the Vegas lifestyle, and it's quite popular over there. I, mean, I suppose really in America, 1960s is like antiques, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, so if you don't go to beauticians to relax, what, what do you enjoy no, doing in Leeds? Um, eating out, go out with friends a lot. Um, at the weekends I do Pilates and walk and I've got a friend I walk with and then we'll, we'll I'll go to Pilates, meet him and walk and then go have lunch at Roundy Park at the mansion. Um, so that's kind of my Saturday, Sunday morning routine on the whole. And on an evening go out with friends, usually for dinner, sometimes just for drinks, but mostly we go out for dinner and chats and things. Occasionally in the cinema, um, you know, and just um, normal sort of thing. I don't really have a hobby as such, because in a way it feels like my job is my hobby. You know mm. what I mean? It's, if I had more time, I'd probably just do more of what I do. Yeah. Um, so I, I, it doesn't really feel like having a job. I do a lot more hours than if I did a nine to five job, but it doesn't feel like it. I wouldn't swap. Yeah. And where do you see yourself in five years time? That's an interesting question. Um, hmm. Possibly doing mm, a progression of what I'm doing now. I don't see me stopping working. I don't see that as a retirement, as an option. If I ever move from here, it will probably be to build a house or to do a, a renovation that's so big it won't look like what I buy. But at the moment, I'm, I'm not even thinking I want to leave here. <laughs>